we uh, we already spoke about uh, we have already spoken about uh, superposition concept. Uh, and what was the superposition? Superposition was uh, a concept uh, according to which, uh, let's say we have uh, two level systems. So uh, the state, yeah, that's better. Um, Sorry, give me a second. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, the state of the system such that uh, in uh, uh, after the measurement, we can find uh, the system either at the state A either the state A or at the state B. And we already know that uh, the probability to find uh, the system at the state A, uh, so to measure uh, measure some property uh, which equals to uh, some, uh, some observable uh, to be equal to A equals to the uh, square of uh, absolute value of alpha. Uh, the probability of measuring uh, the value the value b is equal to a uh, square of absolute value of b uh, or uh, vice versa uh, yeah in the, in that case uh, you should the the probabilities Satisfy, should satisfy uh, the uh, the normalization uh, condition. Equal to one. So the total probability should equal to one. Either you uh, because uh, you should measure um, you should measure something either A or B. Uh, there is no other possibilities. Uh, can I ask uh, you to? Turn off the microphone. Okay. Excuse me, can I ask you to turn off the microphone? Okay. Mm. Maybe we can. Okay, maybe. One second. Um. Uh, so let me help you to contact with him. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, with okay, uh, I will. I will uh, continue. I hope. Uh, so sorry for <laughs> for the sound. Uh, so the probability is given by the coefficients, and what uh, uh, what we measure in, ex in experiments is just these these probabilities. However, we didn't speak about that, but uh, apart the probabilities, yeah, one more thing. Uh, you uh, you see that. The sum of squares of this uh, of these values equals to one. Uh, but uh, let's remember from from the school uh, the sum of uh, what values equals to one too. Uh, that uh, uh, geometrical uh, concepts. So if we took alpha equals to sinus of uh, theta and beta equals to cosine of uh, the same uh, angle theta. Then we see that uh, alpha squared plus beta squared equals should, uh, should equal to 1 because we know that the sum of uh, sine squared plus uh, and cosine squared equals to 1. So uh, this superposition uh, can be written in the following way sine, I'm uh, sorry, sine theta times a plus cosine 
that uh, times b. And uh, what does it mean? It mean uh, it means that uh, you can uh, you can depict your uh, your wave function your wave fu oh I'm sorry not not in that way uh, you can depict your wave function uh, at some unit circle and each each point would corresponds to Mm. Yeah, let's say it would be theta. Uh, X, Y, so here's A, uh, A, here's B. Mm, no, here's would be A, and here would be B. So at theta equal to 0, uh, sine, of, uh, sine of theta equal to 0, and we have only so that's a pretty nice geometrical uh, geometrical uh, uh, geometrical representation and geometrical intu uh, intuition into uh, this uh, superposition. Uh, the another important thing that uh, actually in real life uh, you can never get uh, pure uh, two-level system. There already be some. Uh, there already be some additional states apart these two states, and let's assume that uh, uh, apart from these states, there are some states state gamma times c, and gamma is very small. That mean uh, that mean that uh, alpha plus that, uh, alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared equals to 1. And that means that uh, alpha squared plus beta squared is less than 1 because gamma is gamma squared, epsilon value of gamma is positive value. And that means that your point uh, at this plot would be not here but somewhere inside the circle because the total probability of finding either B, uh, uh, to find the system either in uh, A state or in B state equals to, uh, is less than 1. So that is uh, the geometrical uh, intuition of this uh, state superposition. Uh, next, uh, we didn't spoke about, uh, uh, we didn't speak about that, uh, but we would speak uh, about today uh, about it today uh, their phase factor near near some uh, near some uh, state uh, sometimes play important role because let's take uh, let's take uh, such a state psi mm, equals to a plus b, uh, psi 1, and uh, psi 2 equals to a minus b. You see, uh, note that uh, in both these cases the, uh, the, the coefficients are not normalized. To normalize them, I have to multiply the sum by 1 over 2 squared because uh, because um, 1 over 2 uh, squared squared plus uh, square root of 2 square root of 2 squared equals to 1 so both in both of these state of oh, these states um, you see that the probability uh, of finding a or b uh, equals to 1 half but if we interfere these states, so put them, put, put them. Uh, uh, let's assume that uh, it is state of photons, and we emit uh, these photons at the same uh, at the same point. Uh, and in that case, in that case, uh, you have uh, to find out the sum the sum psi1 plus psi2 
set to equals to um, square uh, a. a. You see that these states cancel on each other, and uh, this cancellation was due to the sign. Uh, in real life, uh, so the phase is important. If you have only one state, let's say A, no matter how what sign here or 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 phase factor I phi here, the result, the probability, and the result of the measurement would be the same. However, if you have uh, the mixture, not mixture, uh, superposition of states, e, and you want to somehow to add up, add them up, um, uh, the the phase factor, the sign, uh, becomes important because uh, in real life you have not only the sign, you can change uh, the whole phase factor. You see that if uh, phi if phi equals to if i equals to pi, then uh, e time uh, e e pi e pi equals to minus one, and that corresponds to changing the sign. However, I can make any arbitrary phase uh, can put the system uh, to have uh, uh, the, any arbitrary as, uh, value of this phase phi. So, uh, we know that uh, our, uh, the sum of alpha squared, alpha squared plus uh, e times i phi uh, beta squared equals to alpha squared plus uh, beta squared because uh, absolute value of uh, uh, e uh, in power of i phi equals to 1. We know that it is it equals to 1. So we can uh, as it was in uh, <clears throat> as it was uh, in the previous example we can substitute uh, alpha by sine of theta and beta by cosine of some uh, value of theta and write down uh, that uh, phi equals to sine theta theta times a plus e, e phi uh, cosine of theta is b. And here and here, uh, without losing any generality, we can say that theta we can. Mm, we can represent any uh, any numbers uh, any numbers alpha and beta uh, and this uh, product here uh, by choosing any angle theta uh, between uh, between zero and pi and phi between zero and two pi. So and. Uh, you should already uh, you should you see the picture, and you should should remember uh, that. Uh, uh, you should recall that uh, this angles is just uh, angles in spherical system, and so uh, this state psi can be represented. Uh, as a point uh, at the sphere, as uh, as the point uh, as uh, at some sphere, and this sphere is called Bloch sphere. Uh, Professor Gorev, I will t talk uh, much more about uh, this stuff, but I just uh, gave you a brief introduction of uh, of uh, what would be at the next lecture. So it's pretty. Uh, a pretty nice um, intuition into these states. It, um, using this block sphere representation, uh, you can uh, more um, you can easily demonstrate 
uh, what states do you have um, rather than to just to write down your so either you can write down the uh, the coefficients alpha and beta uh, the sum of which the sum of absolute value of this coefficient equals to one or you can just to point out the for uh, just depict the point at the block sphere and it uh, kind of uh, much easier to understand and to operate. Uh, so uh, we already spoken about uh, we have already spoken about that, but uh, we repeat that uh, if you have uh, this uh, if you have the state psi alpha a plus beta b and measure uh, some value. Uh, some observable that is given by uh, uh, that depends on uh, which state your uh, your system is. Uh, you can get either value a or value b, and after the measurement, after the measurement. You get either uh, either state A or state B. So, uh, what does measurement? Uh, what uh, the measurement does? Uh, it somehow collapses the wave function, uh, making bringing from bringing it from the sum of the states. To one, uh, to only one state. So you cancel one of this. Let's say uh, you cancel a state, you cancel a state, and you obtain b uh, only b state. Or you cancel b state, and you obtain only a state. Uh, <clears throat> mm, that is that. Um, that process uh, sometimes called collapse of the uh, collapse of the um, wave function because uh, one uh, before mentioned you have the whole sum of all uh, po all possibilities uh, of overcomes <clears throat> but after the measurement uh, you have erased all information about the all possible possibilities in this case this possibility was either or a b and you get only one possibility let's say b uh, the another way of thinking about that is the measurement is the projection of this function of the states on uh, on either a or b state because uh, you understand that uh, let's say uh, B projection of B. What is projection? Projection uh, in geometry. Uh, projection in geometry. If we have some vector A and uh, x-axis unit vector along x-axis unit vector along y-axis, then the projection uh, of the vector A ax is just an x-coordinate of A. And how can we find it? We can uh, calculate the dot product, uh, the scalar product of the vector a with vector x, and that will give us where x is a unit vector uh, of the x-axis equals to a x. In the same way, a y gives us a y. So in the same way the scalar product of the b state with psi equals to alpha b a b a plus beta uh, b b but we assume that b is the normalized state that is why uh, uh, this projection of b to itself or this scalar product uh, Mm, dot product gives us one 
uh, and this product uh, is the projection of state B on the state A or scalar product of two different states B and A and uh, if B and A gives different corresponds to different values of the observable uh, and uh, the air eigenstate of some Hermitian, uh, Hermitian operator then these states uh, are, uh, are orthogonal and uh, the scalar product of two orthogonal states equals to zero and that, we, and that gives us beta times one where beta gives us the probability to find out the state uh, the system at the state B uh, yeah, we'll skip us. So uh, let's force uh, for uh, to be more uh, intuitive uh, to make our explanation more intuitive. Uh, consider not some arbitrary state A and B. Consider uh, the particle or the electron uh, having spin either up or down. So angular momentum, uh, inner angular momentum up or down. And uh, we saw that uh, in Stan Gallagher experiment, uh, we can measure. Uh, we can measure the. Um, sorry, it's, I should. Uh, I should add the coefficients here. Uh, so with probability uh, alpha absolute with probability uh, alpha squared, squared, beta squared, we get either uh, up and down or down. And what I, what I want to uh, point out here is that in quantum, quantum mechanics uh, uh, is principally undetermined, uh, is principally uh, undeterminate. Uh, uh, the systems in quantum mechanics uh, we, we spoke that in classical mechanics uh, the system uh, are determined so knowing uh, uh, once you know the initial conditions and once you know all information about the system um, in the simple case if you know the coordinate and the velocity and the potential of the system you can predict uh, to the unlimited future, uh, unlimited time in future, let's say a billion years, the trajectory of the uh, particle, the dependence of the coordinate of the particle on the time. Uh, and all mm, and all laws in classical physics, uh, by classical physics, uh, in classical uh, conception, in classical physics, I include also uh, special relativity and uh, general relativity theories because they uh, they obey uh, they obey this classical uh, classical concepts of determinism. Quantum mechanics is not deterministic because if you will measure if you will measure uh, the value of spin uh, of the particle uh, that is in that state, you either get you either get uh, spin up or spin down. So if you uh, you if you have this uh, instrument with a nonlinear magnetic field, uh, the uh, the particle will incline either up or down if you put it uh, through, uh, through the instrument. Uh, but the direction of inclination up or down uh, would be chosen randomly. By saying randomly, I mean the real undetermined randomness. Because if you toss a coin or toss a dice, uh, um, or work in casino, the uh, the odds of uh, having uh, some side of the coin uh, uh, is uh, is random. So you can you you have the your side of the coin uh, pretty random. However, this randomness is governed by not by the 
uh, and deterministic uh, principle and deterministic laws of uh, that govern the movement of the coin. But uh, this randomness. Uh, sorry, can I ask you to uh, to turn off your microphone? Uh, So if you have uh, your coin, uh, your coin. Sorry, I'm very bad painter. Uh, so it would be side A and side B. And if you toss this, uh, in principle, you can uh, you can build an in, uh, build a machine that will cross a coin uh, without any randomness because you can. Uh, you can calculate the point at which uh, you will apply the uh, force to the coin. You can uh, calculate the force uh, which will you apply to the coin. Uh, you know the air condition um, uh, in the outside. And then you calculate the whole trajectory of the coin um, uh, falling to the, uh, onto the table. And you can predict uh, very certainly what side of the coin uh, uh, you would get. In real life, it is much more uh, much more difficult because it is too much. Uh, uh, there are many uh, there are many factors governing uh, the movement of this coin, and uh, that is why uh, your uh, um, the the result is random. The randomness of the result is governed by lack of information. So because you uh, tossing a coin, you don't know uh, the information about the initial conditions and the force and the point you apply uh, a point of coin at which you apply this force. But if you know this, uh, if you know in principle you can. Uh, measure all these uh, initial conditions, all these factors, and you can predict, then the toss of the coin would not be uh, random. So in classical mechanics, the, the randomness comes from uh, the, our lack of knowledge uh, about the system. But in quantum mechanics, the randomness is real, it's uh, absolute randomness, because uh, how much, uh, uh, despite the, no matter how much information you, we know about our system, uh, you cannot, uh, you cannot predict at all uh, the result of uh, the measurement. Where would the, um, where uh, would uh, this particle? in uh, supervision of states will go either up or down. Uh, at, and this is the very, very important difference between quantum mechanics and classical mechanics. And uh, this property is uh, this property uh, is used in quantum cryptographic uh, in cryptographics uh, because uh, it, uh, it bases on this randomness. It's a principal randomness. Okay. Uh, I told about the, uh, told you about this randomness. However, you can say, uh, excuse me, but maybe, maybe the particle in the experiments, maybe the particle in the experiments. Let's say we have billion particles, uh, all of which are in superposition of states, either up or down. So every particle uh, in this superposition. Uh, alpha up uh, plus beta down. Uh, you can say, uh, excuse me, but this ensemble of this particle, uh, we cannot um, differentiate uh, this ensemble from the ensemble of the particles uh, of the particles when some particles when some particles have spinned up the, uh, let's say, 50% of particles. 
have spin up and 50% of particles have spin down and uh, in a real experiment you would say that in a real experiment both of, the, of these ensembles going through some instrument both of these ensembles will give us and half spin up and a half uh, particles uh, inclined down so uh, that is uh, so what uh, you are saying that uh, there is some hidden variable some uh, some parameter uh, about which we still do, do not know that governs uh, the inclination of a particle either up or down and this theory is called theory of hidden variables because it says that uh, the quantum mechanics is deterministic but uh, as in case of classical mechanics we have no uh, not all information about the system to predict its future and uh, if we if we would know this uh, the information of this about this unknown uh, observable about we, about which we uh, have uh, do not know anything uh, if we have this information we could have predict uh, the results when with 100 uh, probability uh, yeah and this uh, this property is called hidden variable because we don't know about that anything and uh, these theories are called hidden variable theories however and I think we will uh, be able uh, we will speak about uh, that uh, today uh, the physicist John Bell he uh, he invented uh, the possible experiments uh, which can a possible experiment uh, which can uh, which can differentiate between these these two cases either your your uh, the result of your experiment is absolutely random or you have some hidden variable that govern uh, the uh, you have not you <laughs> particle has some hidden uh, variable that governs uh, its um, that govern its uh, behavior in the future and actually and what I like about this uh, a lot uh, uh, John Bell itself he didn't believe uh, that uh, he didn't believe the randomness of the quantum mechanics, and uh, this part uh, he invented it in uh, this uh, experimental setup and uh, the inequality uh, you have to test uh, in this setup, uh, trying to prove that quantum mechanics is not random, uh, uh, not non-deterministic. Uh, he tried to prove that quantum mechanics uh, was deterministic. However, uh, the real life, uh, uh, the real physics, uh, occurred be more more interesting than uh, he expected. And uh, trying to prove that uh, quantum mechanics is deterministic, uh, he uh, invented the way to prove that the quantum mechanic actually is not deterministic. Uh, you know, probably you know that uh, Einstein didn't believe uh, uh, didn't believe this indeterministic uh, nature of quantum mechanics, uh, and here I don't know, but probably by the end of this, his life, he uh, he argued for a deterministic nature of uh, uh, nature uh, of our world of quantum mechanics. Uh, but uh, from the John Bell's experiments, we know that it is not deterministic. However, there is some loopholes, and there is plenty of uh, plenty of um, interpretation of quantum mechanics. Uh, there are some loopholes uh, to uh, still to believe that quantum mechanics is deterministic, but it is. Uh, uh, it is more minor and uh, 
the majority uh, uh, it is a uh, it is minor waves the majority believes and uh, that the quantum mechanics is uh, is indeterministic so uh, briefly what uh, I want to uh, to uh, take from this part of the of the lecture. First of all, uh, the quantum mechanics is fundamentally indeterministic. Uh, uh, with help of quantum mechanics, you can obtain the uh, you can obtain the absolutely random random results because uh, you know that uh, we use the random numbers uh, in our work a lot. If you if you work with uh, programming and programming some Oh, well, let's say different. Uh, I don't know much about engineering, but in uh, in molecular dynamics, you need to uh, to have some random uh, some random numbers, and you know that uh, the generation of these random numbers is pretty hard because uh, mm, there are plenty of algorithms, but uh, uh, some of algorithm. Uh, they have uh, they they give you not some but almost all algorithm give you not the random number but uh, so called pseudo number number a pseudo random number uh, you cannot have the absolutely uh, random uh, uh, actually to have uh, have a random numbers. Uh, some of scientists, uh, the story they went to uh, Monte Carlo, the casino, and they just uh, wrote down the results that um, of the of the of this roulette, uh, uh, the result of uh, of the roulette, and thus they uh, they obtained the real number random numbers for their programming. Uh, now you you can generate the pseudo random numbers and uh, uh, if you use uh, if you use Python language uh, and, and if you use the uh, random library in this language uh, it should uh, it should uh, uh, warn you uh, after the import that you shouldn't use this library for cryptography uh, for cryptography because uh, this uh, because uh, it's um, it's algorithm do not give you random number but they give you absolute random numbers to get the more more random random number uh, you have to import some crypt, crypt, uh, special cryptographic lab libraries uh, so the quantum mechanics is a uh, uh, give you an absolutely uh, absolutely fundamentally uh, random uh, uh, random results uh, and so uh, quantum mechanics in principally indeterministic here you you have to ask me so if uh, the results is uh, principally random what we, what can we say about the system and I say that uh, what uh, in quantum mechanics, all that you can uh, you can tell about the system is the probability, and you can measure this probability. Uh, and in exp in real experiments, you measure the probability. But uh, working even with uh, with a single photon experiments, you uh, every time you work uh, working with single photons, you work with billions of these uh, millions or thousands of these photons. Uh, that were uh, that go through the instruments by one by one, uh, and then you just calculate the probability or the ratio of uh, particles going up or down or either this way or another way. Um, so the next point is the system in quantum mechanics uh, is described by so-called state, and uh, the evolution of this state is determined by uh, Schrodinger equation. Uh, we already write down this equation is h um, uh, i h d or d t psi 
psi equals h psi. So, and the last thing is that, uh, not the last, the, the systems in quantum mechanics can be in so-called superposition state when uh, uh, people usually say that uh, say that uh, you probably heard a lot about that that uh, in this in this state uh, the system is uh, simultaneously uh, having is in state B and in state A uh, yeah you can say that uh, at uh, uh, in some sense that in this system the system have simultaneously spin up or spin down but what do people mean uh, saying that the system is simultaneously in this in these uh, two states it means that uh, uh, it doesn't mean that you can measure this uh, uh, you can measure this uh, this state and uh, after measurement you will get both up and down no uh, simultaneously means that after measurement, after measurement, you randomly will get either up or down. That mean uh, that is the uh, real, uh, real, real meaning of the system that uh, can be simultaneously either or uh, in one state or in another. It means that in after. The experiment after the measurement, you will get either up or down with uh, uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely randomly. And the uh, last thing uh, I want to point out, point out in this part is that uh, the measurement uh, after the measurement, you the your state collapses to either one state or uh, or another, so you lose. All information about uh, what uh, what it was. You lose uh, all information about uh, your mm, mm, your previous state. You get either up or down. So whether it was alpha, beta, you after measurement you have no information about this alpha. You can get only the probability. <coughs> So, the next important uh, fundamental thing I want to speak uh, about is so-called entangled state. And uh, speaking about entangled state, we need to uh, uh, we need to introduce uh, the second particle into our experience. So let's have uh, let's us uh, uh, let's our particle, let's we have one, particle one, particle two. And particle one can be, uh, particle one can be in the set of the states uh, u1, u2, u3, or uh, it, it, bit, uh, it is a bit easier for understanding. Particle one can be in the state either spin up or spin down. The particle two uh, can have its own states, uh, one v one v two. Uh, uh, these states shouldn't be uh, the same as particles one, but uh, for uh, for uh, uh, clear clarity, uh, we would say that the particle two it's. Uh, Mm, let's say particle one is an electron having spin up spin down. The particle two is electron two, which has uh, which can have spin up and spin down. So uh, in the experiments, uh, and let's assume that these particles uh, do not interact with each other. So uh, we can write down uh, that kind of uh, that kind of the state, state psi. Uh, uh, this mm, this sign denotes so-called tensor product uh, or auto product. Uh, if you are familiar with a linear algebra, what does it mean? It means that uh, uh, in our case, it means that we have two independent particles, 
and uh, this particle is uh, in state ui and this particle in state vg or you can write down um, one up uh, two down two down and uh, I'm sorry yeah and what does uh, this state uh, what does this state mean it means that if we measure this state uh, if it's the two particle state means if we measure uh, the spin of the first particle spin of the first particle it gives us spin up and then we measure the spin of the second particle and it will give us spin down uh, independently uh, so and uh, of course you can do not uh, the simple uh, the simple product like this man you have two independent particle one in state u1 the state I'm sorry uh, the second in the state v1 but uh, you can have one particle in the superposition of uh, the state u1 and u2 and the second particle of the superposition position of state v1 and uh, v2 uh, so uh, what does this state mean it means that uh, if we if you measure uh, the state of the particle one you will get with probability mm, with probability alpha one squared uh, that the particle one is in state u1 uh, and then you measure uh, the state of the second particle particle b and you get uh, with probability beta one beta two that uh, this particle is in state v2 or with probabilities b one you will get that this particle is in state v1 so uh, you see that uh, this uh, this state corresponds to two independent particles because the measurement of one particle do not interact with the measurement of another particle uh, so uh, let's let's consider uh, another state let's write down uh, this kind of state and this kind of state is the sum of two independent uh, states and uh, not in quantum mechanics we call it superposition uh, and this state uh, cannot be decomposed into the pr uh, into the product of some state psi 1 of some psi state psi 1 uh, multiplied by some state psi 2 so this state cannot be decomposed into the product of two independent different states uh, you can see it uh, in this example. Uh, sorry, f f uh, excuse me for skip uh, uh, jumping. Uh, so, if you you take the state, okay, let's try to decompose this state into that kind of uh, product. You see that we do not have uh, the cross product, this cross product and this cross product. Uh, uh, what does it mean? It means that alpha 1 b2 equals to 0 and this one equals to 0 to obtain this one. Okay, if alpha 1 b2 equals to 0, so either alpha 1 or b2 equals to 0. Okay, that's alpha 1 equals to 0. Then, uh, if uh, let's alpha 1 uh, be uh, equal uh, uh, let's alpha 1 equal to 0 so if alpha 1 equals to 0 then 
uh, we immediately lose this state. There's no this state. Uh, so we cannot, uh, cannot do that. Let's b2, bet beta 2 mm, be equal to 0. Then we immediately lose this state. So that means that we cannot uh, by any means decompose uh, this superposition into the product of two independent states. Okay, let's uh, so let's have uh, let's consider this uh, uh, this special state. What would we get? Let's uh, put the first I denote uh, um, sorry denote the first particle, the second particle, first particle, second particle. So let's measure uh, the first particle, uh, the spin of the first particle. And let's the spin of the per first particle is uh, spin down. Mm, sorry. We have this instrument and we put through this instrument particle 1. Uh, it can be either in state up or state down and we get state down of this particle, particle 1. And what does it mean? Uh, it means that we need to project. Uh, okay. What does it mean? That we, uh, it means that we have to choose uh, after measurement this state. Uh, it was in superposition, either spin up or spin down. So after uh, you know that uh, after the measurement, uh, the wave function collapses, and we have to choose only one. Uh, term in, t in the superposition. Uh, and in this experiment, this term was spin down. And that means that after the measurement of the first, we measured only the first part, we get uh, the state spin one, spin down, and second particle spin up. So you see that after the measurement of the first. Uh, the first particle, the second particle has no choice but uh, to have uh, the spin up. Uh, there is no uh, after, uh, there is no uh, superposition of uh, this uh, superposition of the spin up and spin down for second particle. So after the measurement of the uh, of first particle, the second particle that didn't know anything about the first one, it immediately, immediately without measurement, goes to the state up. Uh, and that is very... And if we, uh, for particle one, if we get spin up, we immediately, for particle two, get spin up. Uh, and uh, this uh, kind of states is called entangled states uh, because mm, this, these two particles is kind of entangled. Uh, how can we do it in the experiments? In the experiments, uh, people prefer to work with um, entangled photons. It is much easier to work with photons, but uh, sometimes you can use uh, electrons. Uh, how can we do that? Uh, we can, mm, for photons, we can generate the pair of photons uh, by means of, uh, of, of some, some, some particles uh, that... Mm, <laughs> oh, let's, let's, uh, mm, let's imagine another... Uh, let's generate the... Uh, pair of uh, electron. So we can generate two electron by means of some procedure. Uh, let's we have uh, some system with uh, zero uh, with zero angular momentum. So m equals to zero. So angular momentum of the system equals to zero total angular momentum. Then uh, uh, by some ways we can generate two electrons 
uh, going from this uh, from this system, and the system still has angular momentum zero. But that means that uh, if the system had uh, angular momentum equal to zero and uh, it uh, this angular momentum remains after the generation of two electrons, these electrons, the sum of the angular momentum of these electrons, should equals to should equal to zero too. And that means that one particle, uh, one electron should have spin up, and the other should have spin down to uh, to obey the conservation law. The same thing, the same thing goes with the photon. Uh, however, in photon we uh, were interested in we are usually interested in uh, uh, polarization of the photon, and we can. Uh, we can draw the polarization the same way, polarization of the photon, or either up or down, uh, photon polarization. It can be either circular or we can we can uh, either circular or linear polarization, or uh, we can use polarization uh, on the one axis and or and in other axis. There are plenty of ways to do that, but we can. Uh, generate the pair of photon uh, knowing that uh, the sum of the spin or polarization of this photon should be zero. So uh, knowing that, we know that uh, these photons have opposite uh, opposite direction of polarization or uh, not opposite, let's say orthogonal or pro about all the crons, uh, we know that they have opposite directions of the spins and due to conservation laws. Um, so um, let's um, let's do that. Let's generate such uh, let's generate such uh, um, such a pair. Sorry. I don't do it that way. I'll go here. Let's generate the pair of electrons or photons. And one electron we travel one electron uh, to the moon. To the moon. To the moon. And one would be somewhere on the earth. Earth. The distance between Moon and Earth is not so large, but still. Then we know that uh, these two electrons are in this in uh, in this t uh, in uh, in this entangled state, and we can measure uh, at the Moon. We can measure the spin of this electron, and we will get. And we will find that the spin is up. Then immediately, we know that the spin of this electron is down. Uh, you can argue that, uh, as it was before, that uh, okay, probably uh, before the measurement, before uh, just right after the generation of this pair, one electron had spin up. And the second electron had spin down, and all we do, we just find that uh, at the moon, uh, we find out that this electron was spin, uh, spin up. Um, you can imagine imagine another experiment, a classical experiment. You have a box, black box, with one uh, uh, black ball and white ball, and uh, you blindly separate these balls far away, then. Open your hand. You see that uh, the first ball, uh, the ball that you have uh, taken to the moon, is white. Then you immediately know that the ball, uh, the another ball, is black. Uh, however, uh, in the quantum mechanics, uh, it doesn't work in that way because this electron, uh, this electron. Uh, that we have separated is in the superposition is in the superposition of states. It chooses 
it chooses the spin up or spin down randomly. It is not the predetermined state. It is not predetermined state. Uh, it is a randomly chosen state, either up or down. And I already told you about the, that uh, Bell inequalities uh, that prove that indeed uh, this electron uh, didn't have uh, determined spin up or spin down. It had. Uh, it was in. Uh, it was in the supervision in the superposition of the states, either up or down, and that is that. That is a fascinating thing. That uh, no matter how far we separate the uh, electrons, maybe one would be at the moon uh, and the Earth, and another would be at the Mars. Uh, you know that uh, uh, at some points of orbits, the distance between Earth and Mars is that uh, that that uh, the uh, light have to go about 20 minutes from the uh, Mars from to, to the Earth. Uh, I think it's the closest distance between Earth and Mars. And even in that case, if we measure this electron, uh, the, this electron immediately uh, will obtain its spin. Uh, so the speed, the speed uh, of transferring of this information is infinite is much larger than speed of light and that is what that was proved experimentally however uh, you should be uh, very careful uh, uh, this experiment do not transfer any information because you cannot transfer any information from this point to this point what you uh, because of, of one very important thing because I, I told you that uh, the result of the experiment is random. So you get uh, the spin up or spin down here randomly. And that means that here you randomly get spin down and spin up and you cannot um, you cannot um, manipulate with the spin, with the spin in the Mars, to uh, to the spin of this Earth to change it, you just only you only just uh, get the collapse of the wave function uh, in Earth and Mars simultaneously. But you do not get any new information. Just like in this case with uh, just in this example with black and uh, black and white uh, ball because once you open your your hand and find out the white ball in your hands and you know that uh, in earth uh, in the earth uh, ball is black uh, you didn't transfer information uh, you you get the information that in earth the uh, ball is black but only because these two balls was entangled uh, you can transfer any information faster than speed of light. Uh, that is very important. Uh, so uh, let's let's make a break, and uh, then I will uh, I will talk about some uh, quantum optics experiments. So I would speak about uh, optics. Mm. Uh, and uh, there are two. So optics is photons and the light. There are two ways. There are many ways of uh, uh, dealing with light. But uh, I would speak about uh, two instruments. Actually, it's four instruments. But uh, first instrument is uh, the first instrument uh, is a light emitter. The second instrument is light detector. The third instrument is a mirror. Mirror just changes uh, the direction of uh, direction of the light. 
um, yeah. And the most important instrument what I want to speak is the beam, spl beam splitter. Beam splitter uh, splits the inserted beam into two beams. Uh, one is trans transmitted beam and the another is reflected beam. We can uh, uh, we can uh, construct this beam splitter uh, such way that uh, uh, actually uh, I think the arbitrary percentage of uh, beam can be reflected and transmitted but we will speak about uh, the balanced uh, beam splitter at which uh, the 50% of the beam uh, is reflected and 50% of the beam is transmitted. Uh, the important property of uh, the beam splitter uh, and the reflection of the light from the uh, from the dielect uh, dielectric uh, dielectric media is that uh, if uh, when the light is reflected from a material with higher reflective index its phase shifts by pi. What does it mean? It means that if your uh, beam is traveling in the air and it reflects from the uh, dielectric material which dielectric constant is obviously higher than the dielectric constant of the air because the dielectric constant of the air is approximately 1 uh, then uh, the phase of the light uh, phase of the reflected beam shifts by uh, plus p, uh, pl by pi so you you have to multiply uh, your amplitude by e times i pi uh, let's do it here e times i pi uh, there is no such uh, transformation with transmitted beam occurs uh, however, if the light reflects from the co uh, from uh, the material with higher reflect reflective index, let's say it uh, reflects uh, from the coating in a uh, um, so here epsilon is one, epsilon not uh, not uh, epsilon equals I don't know. Let's take 1.4, and here it's arbitrary numbers. 1.4, uh, and here is 1.2. In this case, uh, the reflection of the light occurs from the media with higher reflective index. Here it's 1.4. Uh, mm, it reflects from the media with a lower reflective index, which is 1.2. And in this case, the phase shift doesn't occur, so there's no phase shift here. Uh, so let's uh, let's look uh, mm, let's construct construct that kind of uh, an instrument. In this instrument, the incident light goes uh, mm, to the beam splitter, splits to the fifty percent. Uh, fifty percent is split. Fifty percent. Then uh, it is reflected by the mirrors. To mirrors, uh, let let these mirrors be ideal. So hundred percent is reflected. And then uh, this beam comes to the beam splitter, and the fifty percent of this beam goes up. So here we have twenty five percent of the beam, and 50% of this beam goes uh, uh, transmits from the beam splitter, so 25%. And the 50% of this beam transmit uh, is transmitted uh, through the beam splitter, so here 25%. And 50% uh, of this beam reflects, so we have 25, 25 I'm sorry, uh, 25%. So we have 50% here and 50% here. However, uh, and here uh, we're here uh, 
the outcomes we can uh, we can make uh, the uh, the path of the light and the beam splitter uh, in such way that uh, these two these two light beams would uh, interfere with each other and uh, uh, this in this direction they will they would interfere destructively so here we'll have my uh, 25 percent minus 25 percent uh, which give us no no no, no. they would uh, uh, they would uh, interfere destructively and we would get uh, not 50 percent but uh, zero percent. Uh, let me take green. Uh, it would get zero percent, and in this case, it would get not fifty percent but hundred percent. So hundred percent of light. We can make this uh, beam splitters in such a way that hundred percent of them of uh, light, light intensity would go to the um, D0 detector and 0% no, none of the light will go to the D1 detector. So uh, let's do a little bit of the math. Of math. Very very simple. Uh, so uh, in quantum mechanics, uh, we can imagine that uh, uh, this, this experiment will, can be made with any light, but uh, we can use the source of single photons, so uh, we can work with uh, single single particles. And uh, we, can, uh, we will describe the state of the particle by a vector. I'm sorry, what's happening? Uh, uh, we will describe the state of the particle by a vector vector alpha beta or alpha one not plus beta uh, zero one where uh, the vector zero one describes uh, the particle uh, that goes on the at the upper side of the instrument and the vector zero one uh, one zero describes the particle going to the upper side of the uh, instrument, and zero one describes the particle going at the lower side of the lower side of the instrument. Uh, so, if we are working with single photons, uh, what happens with single photon at this beam splitter? It either can go up. Or go down. It uh, the photon cannot divide into two parts. The same thing in here. It either goes up into the state detector or goes down. However, we remember that in quantum mechanics there is a concept of superposition, and uh, in real physics, the photon would go. Uh, would go simultaneously up and down, meaning that uh, after uh, after going through the beam splitter, uh, um, the photon uh, would uh, would be in the superposition uh, in the superposition of the states up and down, meaning that uh, the vector corresponding to the state is one uh, square root of two. 1 over square root of 2 because the probability equals to 1 over square root of 2 1 0 uh, plus 1 over square root of 2 0 1 the probability of uh, the upper way is 1 uh, over square root of 2 squared equals to 1 half and uh, probability to find out the photons 
and the uh, downway path is one half two. So how can we measure? We can put these det detectors here and this detector detector here, and we find out that uh, while we emitting single photons, uh, some photons, fifty percent of photons will go, uh, will take upway upper way up path, and fifty percent of photons will get uh, take the down path. Okay. Uh, so if we are working with uh, uh, the vectors. Mm, we should mm, mm, mm -hmm. okay. Let's let's go here. If we are working with the vectors, uh, we remember that uh, the operators in quantum mechanics. Uh, if we if we work in the in terms of work in the state, we just describe the states in vectors uh, uh, in vector representation. By vectors, then the operators is the matrices. So, what do we get uh, in the BIM splitter? Uh, we uh, mm, we take the state one naught uh, one zero and change it to the state one over uh, one over square root of two. Oh. 1 on the square root of 2, or uh, the same as 1, 1, 1. So the beam splitter somehow transfers, rotates uh, th this vector to become uh, this kind of vector. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> let's find out. Mm. No, I wouldn't do that. Uh, and the matrix that is that corresponds to uh, we can write down the matrix that corresponds to uh, such a that corresponds to such a transformation. And uh, this matrix, uh, one of possible ways of uh, I wouldn't uh, uh, I wouldn't discuss the. Um, rigorous uh, derivation of this matrix, but uh, obviously we can, uh, so what we can do, we can try this kind of matrix acting on 1, 0. So what we get? We get 1, 1. We see that this vector is not normalized, so we have to obtain 1 over square root of 2 so that is our matrix. Okay, let's try the following. Let's try uh, this matrix on the vector on the vector one over half two one 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 uh zero one. We get one square root of two one one. So work it works. However Let's uh, put through this uh, act by this matrix, or it's the same thing. We put the vector, uh, the the vector. Mm, let's take the vector one. Uh, sorry, mm, one one, and put it through the beam splitter, meaning that we act by act by the beam splitter one 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 so we act by this matrix on this vector and what we find out uh, one half here what would it be mm, two and here it is two so what would we get we get vector one one we see that this vector, uh, this matrix, do not uh, conserve, uh, do not conserve the length of the vector, uh, because we uh, mm, uh, we gave we uh, gave the vector with length equal to one and obtained 
the vector with length equal to square root of 2 because 1 plus 1 square, uh, square root of 1 plus 1 is square root of 2. The length of this vector is square root of 2. That means that this matrix can it serve as the can it serve as the beam splitter? Uh, what can serve? Mm. Uh, there are two possibilities that we can. Uh, there are two possibilities that uh, we can use as a beam splitters. We change the sign of this minus one here and here, uh, and we can check that. Uh, this beam splitter squared minus one 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 acting on vector zero one um, gives us uh, minus one one square root of two. Uh, you see that the length is conserved. We can check another vector, square root of 2, minus 1, 1, 1, 1. <coughs> uh, sorry for the noise, it's some kind of construction going here. Um, equals to 1 half, 1 half, so minus 1, 1 will give us 0 here, uh, this row on this column and this row and this column will give us 2. So, will bring us um, to the vector 0, 1. So, this matrix conserves the length of this vector. Uh, let's, uh, let's discuss a little bit the geometrical intuitive under this uh, uh, for this matrix. First of all, um, Probably you know from linear algebra uh, what 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 we want to do. We would uh, you know, we want to actually um, uh, we want some matrix that takes the vector and give us the vector with the same length, uh, the two-dimensional vector. But uh, what does it mean? It means that this matrix just rotates the vector uh, we take this vector and this vector just rotates this vector uh, in some plane uh, and uh, to uh, not all metrics uh, obey the condition of the conservation of the length of the vectors uh, we should demand uh, this matrices uh, should satisfy the condition that the determinant these matrices are called orthogonal or, um, or unitary mm, uh, and they should uh, satisfy the condition that determinant of this matrix equals to 1 and you can check that the determinant of this uh, hey, uh, uh, the square root of the determinant of this matrix equals to 1. You can check that uh, the determinant of this matrix equals to um, minus 1. Uh, let's take it. Um, yeah, 1 half times uh, 1 plus 1 equals to 1. But if we take the matrix 1, 1, 1, 1, you know that the determinant of this matrix equals to 0 because it is it has equal uh, rows. And that is why this matrix wasn't uh, good enough to describe the rotation of this vector. So, uh, you should uh, what I want you to understand is that uh, this multiplication, uh, this mirror map, multi uh, this multiplication, uh, stands for uh, stands for transferring the light st 
stands for transferring the light uh, through the beam splitter. So this this uh, simple multiplication is just uh, putting the beam splitter. Uh, sorry, that's not the best way. Uh, yeah. And here it goes either up or either up or down. And so what we here have, we have 50% uh, of going up and 50% going down. 50%, 50%. And what if we take uh, this multiplication? We take this beam splitter BS1, we take the beam splitter BS1, put the light 1-1, one, one. what does it mean? That we put half of the light from here and half of the light from here. And what, what we get uh, putting such light, uh, such a beam through this uh, through the beam splitter? We get 0-1, that means that we get only uh, the beam only on the down path, 100%. And here, zero percent going up. So this beam splitter is minus one, 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 and that is this. This is one, one, one over two. Uh, and here is zero one. So you should see the uh, clear connection between experimental setup and mathematics. In, in uh, this case, it's very, very uh, straightforward. It's just a multiplication of the matrices. Uh, so, you see that the beam, splitter, the beam going through beam splitter, a beam splitter not only changes the, uh, not only splits the beam, but it also changes the sign, or as we call it, it adds the uh, the phase shift to the upper uh, to the uh, upper beam. Okay, uh, I hope you understand it. So let's look uh, on there. Yeah, there is there is another uh, there are the, there is another instrument uh, people work with is the phase shifters. It's a sum plate. Uh, going through which the light uh, changes its phase so the plate multiplies the the amplitude amplitude of the phase by some um, amplitude of the wave by uh, some phase uh, phase shift uh, i delta where delta is uh, the shifting of the phase so let's take uh, this uh, interferometer this interferometer is called uh, sorry uh, Mach Zeta interferometer. It's pretty old. It's uh, it was invented at the end of the 19th century. Uh, so we know the matrix for BS beam splitter one. Uh, what about the matrix for for the mirror? Uh, so yes. the mirror transfers. Uh, uh, these mirrors do not change anything at all. They do not change the phase, a, and they do not change the side uh, side of the instrument the uh, light beam light beam takes. So it was um, yeah. Uh, that means that the mirror. Uh, mirrors uh, has the matrix, the unit matrix, because it doesn't change anything at all. Beam splitter, let's take B minus 1, 1, 1, uh, 1. Beam splitter 2, uh, okay, let's, we can take either beam splitter 2 or beam splitter 1 uh, uh, as we wish. Let's take beam splitter 2, which is uh, Sorry, I should uh, recall what beam splitter two. 
sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, beam story two has minus one at the uh, right right down corner, right bottom corner, one 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 minus one. And so, uh, how do we find uh, the probability of getting photons here and here? It's easy. We first of all we have to act by the beam splitter one on the incident light uh, beam, let's V, let's denote it by V. Then we act by the mirror on this light M and then we act by the beam splitter beam splitter 2 on the result of uh, on the result uh, uh, of uh, going through the mirror. Uh, mathematically we know that beam splitter 2 is this matrix. Okay, let's. Mm, sorry, I forgot about the normalization constants. Beam splitter 2 is 1 over uh, square root of 2, 1, 1, 1, minus 1. Then the mirror. Mirror is just a unit matrix. Then the beam splitter 1. Let's do it. Okay. One more square root of two minus one 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 times some vector alpha beta. So uh, first of all, you see that uh, the sequence of incidenting uh, is that uh, is the beam splitter one mirror then beam splitter two and the sigma sequence on the matrix uh, is goes from the right to the left. First of all first of all we act by BS1, then mirror, then BS2. Okay. So we can calculate the matrix of the whole instrument by multiply, uh, multiplying these three matrices. So what we get. Uh, we can neglect this matrix because it's a unit matrix. It, ch it doesn't change at all because we know that any matrix times unit matrix equals to itself. Uh, and then we can we should write down one half because one over two square square of two one over two square root of two one 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 minus one times minus one one. One, one, and I here I down the vector. So let's multiply these uh, matrices. What we get? This row on this row gives us zero. Uh, this row on this row gives us two. Uh, this row, this row gives us minus one, minus uh, minus two. And this row on this row gives us zero. So uh, one half, which is zero, one minus one zero. So that is the matrix of our instrument. That means that if we multiply by, uh, if we act by this matrix or multiply this matrix, uh, multiply some vector by this matrix, zero one minus one zero alpha beta what we get let's calculate this row on this column gives us beta and this row on this column gives alpha so what does this instrument the instrument do in this setup in this setup each it switches it switches the uh, parts of the light uh, if we had if we had uh, only if alpha equals to 1 and beta equals to uh, 0 uh, then so 1 0 then here we should have 0 1 so it's switched beta put at the upper side and alpha the downside and this all done by this matrix are uh, so if we put all the light only uh, in all incident light will go from the alpha side alpha 
then we get uh, all the light at the D1 de detector and we get nothing on the D0, de uh, D0 detector and that is uh, how do we work with uh, um, the simple mathematical uh, mathematical approach to this uh, Max Ender uh, interferometer. Uh, obviously we can uh, I told you about this phase shifter assume that we have a phase shifter that adds the phase I delta here. Uh, let's, uh, let's think about the matrix that is, stands for uh, the phase shift, this phase shifter. What does this phase shifter does? And what do? Uh, it's transfer, uh, it transfers uh, alpha beta vector into the vector. It doesn't alter the uh, light going at the lower path beta and it multiplies the upper by I delta. And it is easy to, to deduce that the matrix corresponding to this phase shifter is the, is the diagonal matrix I delta 0, 0, 1 alpha beta. You see that we will gain the same thing. Because uh, the non-diagonal elements uh, corresponds to uh, to taking uh, uh, to to mixing the upper and lower paths, and the diagonal elements only corresponds to multiplication of these paths by some uh, by some value. Uh, what I wanted to tell you uh, additionally here. Mm, let's see. Mm, yes. And that uh, that uh, that is very important. Uh, we're speaking about these vectors uh, and those these phases. However, uh, what is really happening is very very strange thing. Before now you see that uh, here we have mm, let's say we have uh, what do we have here? Mm. If we have here one uh, uh, not one zero vector. After that, we have here minus one, one vector. Yeah. So what does it mean? One over two uh, square root of two. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, that the photon is uh, let's be let, mm, minus one over square root of two. 1, 0, plus 1 over square root of 2, 0, 1. It means that the photon is uh, in the superposition of two states. Going, uh, the one state, uh, uh, one state corresponds to photon uh, at the upper side of the instrument, and the, in the other state corresponds to the photon at the downside of the, at the lower side of the instrument. Uh, that means that this photons, photon simultaneously uh, goes through both paths, upper side and lower side. Uh, why, uh, why does it surprise me uh, is that when we were speaking about uh, superposition of, uh, let's say, spins, plus spin down. I didn't write the normalization constant. It was a little, it was kind of easier to understand. Uh, we know we know that uh, here is the electron, is the electron, and, oh, sorry, yeah. here is the electron, and uh, this electron, we measuring this electron, we get either spin up or spin down randomly. So, mm, so, but what happens here is that 
these states, uh, these two states correspond to different position of the electron uh, of the photon. It's either here or here, and we do not know where it is. And uh, uh, that is which surprised me a lot because one one thing to one thing is to think about the electron uh, having either spin up or down uh, randomly but another thing uh, is to think about the photon uh, either here or here or simultaneously here and here and uh, uh, and we find out randomly at which place it is uh, by measuring this photon, uh, measuring the position, its position with detector. So only after the measurement of the photon, uh, its state collapses, and this and this photons and this photon becomes either here or here. After that, we can say that uh, it is simultaneous and go by uh, two paths. Uh, so, there is some, uh, uh, some very um, uh, very curious experiment that is called a Litzer-Weidman bomb tester that, um, um, that utilizes this mach zander interferometer. Let's, let us uh, have uh, uh, let us have uh, this imaginary bombs, uh, which uh, one is uh, one is a bomb that explodes once the photon goes through the detector inside this uh, inside this bomb. So once one photon, just one, it has single photon detector. Once only one photon goes through this detector. Uh, it blows up, and we have uh, working uh, working bombs, and we have uh, the bombs that uh, is uh, corrupted, that are not working, uh, because uh, the photon can go through this detector. There is no detector there, and the, it is a transparent uh, bomb. The photon goes through the uh, through this bomb, and do not explode. And that is not working bombs. So how can you mm, and you have a mixture of the bombs? How you can uh, how can you separate this pool uh, this mixture into two parts? Uh, one part uh, one at one part you have uh, working bombs and uh, in other part not working bombs. Let's let's do that. Uh, what we can do only to uh, uh, to emit the light and uh, thus we can test the bomb but if we uh, emit the light uh, and we if we put the light through the working bomb it would explode and so we get no bomb no working bomb and if we emit a light through the not working bomb so we will get not working bomb so you have a mixture uh, of, uh, let's say, working examples, working and not working, not working. It will, if we try to separate them, then we have, will have nothing here, and we will have not working bombs here, because no experiment, uh, at no experiment we can uh, detect whether. Uh, because we need uh, to somehow interact with bomb, but interacting with photons will blow them up. It's an imaginary experiment, uh, as you understand, uh, because in real life we can jump somehow to touch them. Uh, and in real experiments, these bombs is just detectors, the fo single photon detectors. So, in classical physics, we cannot separate uh, uh, this bomb. Okay. Uh, let's go to the quantum mechanics. 
let's uh, take the following uh, setup. Uh, we take the Mach sending interferometer and put uh, some kind of a black wall here. Uh, uh, which, uh, if the potent, or it can be not black wall, but some detector, some detector D2. And if photon hits the, the, this detector, it cannot go there. So, what happens uh, if we put the light through this bit square? Uh, half of the light goes in that way half of the light goes in that way. So half of the light, 50% of photons goes to the detector D2. Okay. And the 50% of the photons goes here, it goes here, and here, uh, this uh, here, uh, this light splits at this beam splur, and 50% of 50% of this. So 25% goes to the detector D0, D0 and 25% goes to the detector D1. So 50% go to D2, 25 to D0, 25 to D1. Uh, you remember that in previous experiment uh, only uh, we in the previous experiment if we put uh, this 0, 1, if there is no wall here, there is no detector here, if we put uh, 0, 1 through this uh, instrument, uh, we remember that the matrix of this instrument is 1, oh, I'm sorry, uh, let me recall what was the matrix, uh, 1 minus 1, okay, 0, 1, minus 1, Zero acting on oh, uh, zero one gives us um, zero uh, one zero. So in previous experiment, uh, this beam uh, would be hundred percent of this beam will be here. Uh, however, if we uh, however if we uh, put through the beam spur two. Uh, the light going only from the up because there is no beam going from the down. Uh, what would we get? We get uh, one half uh, one zero because mm, okay. So after going the beam splitter one, uh, the beam one zero transfers to the beam. Uh, 1 over half, 1, 1. Um, it should be minus 1 here. Then the lower path is closed. So this beam converts to 1 over half, 1, 0. Because there is no beam here. You see that this vector is not normalized because the uh, because there is only 50% of photon here. That is why it is not normal, because there, there is a third, uh, mm, there is a, some third possibility to uh, to get the photon at D2. So, and then when we can, uh, when we put this this beam through the beam splitter 2, we get 1 over uh, one half, one, one, 50 percent, uh, 25 percent here, 25 percent here, because the probability is given by one half squared and one half squared. Okay, uh, so what do we see? Mm, that, uh, if the if we have the blockader. Uh, mm, okay, I will I will write down. Uh, if 
if we have the blockator, uh, the probability of uh, finding the, the photon in the blockator is one half, and probability finding uh, finding the photon at d zero one fourth, probability of finding the photon in d one is one fourth. But before that, uh, if we have no blockator, uh, we remember, you see, that the probability of having uh, there is no blockator, so zero. Probability finding uh, the photon on the d, d0 equals to 1 and uh, probability of finding a photon uh, in uh, detector d1 equals to 0 uh, okay so let's think are there any paradoxes here and we see that if we block if we block the lower path of this uh, uh, d0, d1, so that's a beam splitter, that's a mirror. If we block this path, if we block it, uh, before we blocked it, there uh, the probability of getting photon in d1 uh, was equal to zero and if we once we block this button uh, this path we have non-zero probability 25 percent probability of getting important here okay let's uh, let's think about more deeper uh, what is happening here uh, If uh, if there is a uh, if there is no blockator, mm, there is no photon here. But if if there is a blockator, we have photon here. But how does this photon knows that there is a blockator? No way, because it cannot know about that. Because what is the way uh, of uh, what is the way of the photon getting on uh, this d1 that is the only way it should go here uh, it should take the upper path it should go here and split uh, at the beam score and go uh, take the bottom path uh, this photon cannot go to the uh, cannot take the uh, down uh, the lower path uh, at the first bomb structure because if it takes uh, this path uh, we will get uh, it will uh, it will uh, get to the detector d2 and we would not find it here so this photon this photon never meets this detector and gets it gets to d1 However, we know uh, we know that if there is no uh, blockator, if uh, there is no detector here, this photon would never go, would would uh, never uh, occur at the detector D one. Uh, so, putting putting the blockator. At the down path changes the changes the uh, changes the uh, not the future that uh, changes the behavior of the photon that takes the upper path, even if it do not meet the detector at all. So we can uh, somehow change the behavior of the photon uh, even without interacting this photon. Uh, so, let's go to the our problem. Let's go to the our problem. If this uh, bomb is not working, the probability of getting the photon uh, photon here is zero. Is zero. And uh, we uh, and if this 
bomb is working, the probability of getting photon here is 25%. However, uh, what photons? Uh, so, if this bomb is working, it's, it's a working bomb, uh, there's a 50% chance that it would blow up. Blow up. Okay, 50% of bombs we cannot, uh, we cannot, uh, we just throw away because they will blow up. However, there's a 50% chance that this uh, photon goes takes the upper part, and then there is 50% of chance that it comes to D naught, which uh, which totally gives us 25% of photons goes D naught. Uh, 100%. So without, if bomb is not working, with 100% certainty, uh, the photon gets to D0, D0. Uh, but if bomb is working, with 25% certainty, uh, the photon would go to D0. Uh, it's uh, not working bomb, it's working bomb. In that case, so if the, uh, the photon hits the D0, the detector D0, we cannot separate uh, the cases of working and not working bomb. We don't know. However, there is 25% chance, 25% chance, that the photon would hit the detector D1. And we know that it will, it happens only in case of working bomb. So, uh, one, uh, one, one fourth of all photons, 25% of all photons, uh, if the bomb is working, the 50% of photons will, will blow up the this bomb. However, 25% uh, of this photon, 50% uh, of this photon would not blow up because we have a bit and 25% of uh, the incident photons coming from here uh, comes to detector D1 uh, and if we see the photon of, uh, at D1 we immediately immediately understand that there is a blockator here and that means that uh, at there is a 25 percent chance to uh, to find out that uh, the 25 uh, percent chance to um, to find out that the bomb is working without measuring it and that is called interaction free measurements because uh, no matter why, what is it it's a blockator here it's it's not a bomb, it's some kind of blockator with, uh, with a detector D, D2. We know that there is a blockator here without hitting this blockator. Because there is a chance, 25% chance, that we get that the photon will go all that way and ends up in detector D1 without hitting on this. Uh, without hitting this blockator or bomb, what else, or whatever you want, uh, without hitting this blockator, uh, without hitting this blockator, but once it uh, ends up at detector D1, we know that there is a blockator. That's that's very, very fascinating thing, uh, and that what in quantum mechanics uh, uh, one of the fascinating things in quantum mechanics uh, for the, uh, the entangled states that we can measure the state of uh, the state of this mm, sorry we can measure the state of this blockator whether it blocks the path or not blocks the path without interacting at all with this uh, without uh, interacting with it. Uh, so this experiment is called. So in this experiment, we can separate. 
this mixture of working and not working vacators or bombs. Uh, we can separate, uh, so half of the bombs will blow up. Uh, 25, um, so we will get uh, the separation will be the following. If there is no uh, locator or bomb not working, we'll put it here. Uh, but there's a 25% chance, 25% chance that uh, a bomb is working, but photon goes to the D node detector, and that means that uh, in that case we will get here some uh, working bomb, but which we marked as not working, but the uh, it's 25% of all bombs. 25% of these bo all bombs will blow up. However, 25% of bombs we will we can mark 25 uh, of all bombs as working. So we can take uh, with 25% of chance we can find out uh, uh, the working bomb. And if the photon goes here, we definitely know that this bomb is working, that there's a blockade here. So we, we will lose 25, uh, we will lose 50% uh, bombs by blowing up them. We will lose 25% of them uh, because we do not know, we have no information about whether they are working or not, but in 20% of cases we can find that the bomb, the bomb is working without interacting them at all. That is, mm, uh, that is how it works. Actually, uh, there is a paper, there is experiments that show that we can increase this probability not from 25, uh, from 25 percent to even to 99 percent. Uh, but we need to. Uh, we need to use not the Mach's end of interferometer, but a bit more complicated uh, interferometers to obtain the more accurate results. Uh, so, I think that's all I wanted to tell you in this lecture. So, you see that it was much, much less uh, mathematics here. And we, first of all, we talked about the superposition and that the quantum mechanics is fundamentally an indeterministic, not deterministic the not theory. It shows that the nature of microscopic particles is fundamentally indeterministic. Uh, and uh, we discussed the uh, we discussed the interferometer and the experiments that uh, can can be done with help of interferometers and it can be easily probably you 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 already done this experiments in the lab because uh, the setup is pretty simple uh, however uh, as engineers i want to warn you that uh, all this uh, all this scheme is very simple but uh, in real life uh, the to get photon uh, to the single photon detectors is not so good. You can find out only one over. Actually, I don't know. I forgot the real numbers, but it could be one over one thousand or even one over a million photons that we can find. Uh, we can find out the by these detectors and the mm, the. Uh, and the emitters, generators of the coupled particles, entangled photons, uh, are not uh, ideal to, and the blowers are not ideal to. So, to do the experiments, you need to uh, uh, emit uh, millions of photons. You cannot, uh, uh, and uh, there will be some experimental uh, uncertainties uh, in the experiments. 
but still uh, you can check the bell inequalities you can uh, you can build the experimental setup it's pretty one of the simplest experimental stuff in quantum optics uh, the Mach Zender parameter and you can uh, even it is very simple experiment uh, the Elitzer Weidman bomb test you you can implement it uh, and I described you this fascinating experiment of of uh, so-called uh, interaction free measurements when you can interact yeah that's the, uh, the reference for the paper uh, about the interaction free measurements uh, and that's that is all from my part the next part will will be delivered by Professor Gorev. He will speak about the uh, quantum computers and uh, qubits.